five, four, three, two, one. I'm John Miglosh for the Wisconsin DMA and the International Society for Strategic Marketing. Mail ain't dead. The <laughs> what did Mark Twain say? The stories of my demise have been greatly exaggerated. Whatever. Today we're going to talk about mail. I had some really interesting conversations this week with a big company, big, big, that said, the pandemic has accelerated their digital exploration and they mail a couple of million pieces a year and uh, they think that they can just do all all this great stuff they want to explore machine learning and their main thing unlike i mean a lot like many people in marketing is we're going to predict what you'll buy well, before you spend millions predicting what I'll buy, let's just think about if you can predict what you'll buy. Make a list. Go to Walmart. Don't forget your mask. And see 10 minutes later if you come out with exactly what you predicted, no more, no less. You know, it ain't going to happen. So, I'm doing this on behalf of the of the of the mailers of the world who want to save them from their demise, from their self-inflicted demise. So let's dig in. Let's capture it. Okay, so here we go. Max ROI and chaos. This is going to be a very, very short version. Okay, and we got to put the new, put the new sign up. There we go. So here we go. And I think I'm on a slideshow so I can mark it up and click. What we're after is increase in both growth and profit. One prominent direct marketing consultant said, you can't grow both at the same time. Take your pick. Shrink to be profitable. That was his motto. It's false. Okay, Nordstrom, about a year ago, said, results were hurt by stopping its use of direct mail. Eric Nordstrom, now they're, I think, filing for bankruptcy. Jay Jill said, we plan some shift from direct mail to alternative media options, primarily digital. In hindsight, we moved too much too soon. Linda Heasley is now gone as president and CEO. Keep that in mind if you're the president and CEO. So we see two paths to the future for those traditional mailers. Let's go all in, save a lot of money, don't need those pesky printers or, or USPS, or we just keep mailing the way we always did but we're not making any money and our investors are mad. Are those the only two options? Well, let's look at digital challenges, first of all. And this is from the Content Marketing Institute 2017 survey. 30% measured sales impact, but 57%, almost double, said they were sure that, that content marketing influenced sales, increased sales. That's the kind of world we live in. We measure clicks. We measure, we measure bounce rate. We measure all kinds of things. We don't measure ROI, not in digital. P&G slashed its digital ad spending. Nothing bad happened. In fact, sales went up. Try that with mail. Won't happen. What about digital fraud? Everybody says, oh, that's under control. We got the AI. No, the bots have better AI than you do. Okay, in 2018, 35 billion. 2019, 42 billion. 2023, 100 billion. It's just going, going, going. Zoop, zoop, zoop like that. Okay? And the mafia, I found out, organized crime, said second only to drugs is digital ad fraud. There's big money in digital ad fraud. I'm not going to explain how it works. Okay, so you say, oh, well, we're going to go get artificial intelligence. Gartner last year said 87% of AI projects fail to even attempt ROI. We never even get to trying it, to testing it. Why? Well, the biggest reason, you know, you've been fed the lie of database marketing, then big data, now AI. The more data you've got, the more spurious correlations you get. About 80% of what I do when I build models is get rid of spurious correlations. What does that mean? Well, here's a good example. This is a graph of deaths caused by X-ray contrast media correlating with bicyclists killed in collisions with two or three wheeled motor vehicles. 
Does that make any sense? No. Is it causal? No. But the more data you have, the more you will see correlations going up and down together. And I can tell you that independent variables, what they're feeding you, aren't independent at all. Age, income, presence of children, high school education, dwelling value, median household income, ah, they all kind of flow together in certain places of the, in the country, sometimes almost all the time. So the chances of spurious correlations are extremely good. Plus, unless you build the database carefully, you don't know what got you there. You look at the correlations and you say, oh, most of our customers are wealthy suburban women. The Blood Center of Kansas City I did some work for, that's what they told me. I said, where, where do you go to, where do you advertise the blood center? They said, oh, in upscale real estate magazines because the board of directors likes to see the ads. <laughs> okay, never mind. It helps to have some wisdom. What's required for machine learning? Here's one of the big puzzles. When Jeopardy, when, when IBM wanted to teach Watson to play Jeopardy, they had 127,000 Jeopardy questions over 20 some years. They could tweak their algorithm and they could look and see how Jeopardy, how Watson did on the questions. They kept tweaking until they got it better and could beat everybody, okay? But without the 127,000, they were lost. Like University of Texas found out when IBM claimed Watson could read cancer scans and find the cancer. They quoted them $3 million to build that after 60 more million, 63 million, the University of Texas pulled the plug Never got to ROI, pulled the plug and said, this ain't working and we're not paying. 63 million. That's what you can spend when you try playing with people that don't know what they're talking about. Okay, you've seen this, are you human? Select all the lights. Okay, there's lights, there's lights, there's lights, and there's lights. These lights have little lights on them. These lights don't. Imagine we're pulled up right behind that little truck with a self-driving car. The self-driving car knows what traffic lights look like. These look like traffic lights. Can't see those. Goes whacking right into here if those lights turn red, right? Absolutely. So what we're doing here is we're building a labeled data set for the machine learning system to program the auto driving car. We're saying, oh, sometimes they don't have any lights on them. Sometimes they're facing the wrong way and those actually come sooner in your visual realm and they don't look the same, but they are the ones that you should be really watching for. The humans know that without any even thought. Not a thought. The machine doesn't. So that doesn't look like any of them I've ever seen. They always have little lights on them. See that? We are building millions and millions and millions and millions of images for the self-driving cars. Didn't know that, did you? I tell this story over and over, nobody knows that. What are the advantages of mail? Well, first of all, your brain has 10 times more touch receptors right across a band in here than sight receptors, 10 times, okay? So when you touch something, you get 10 times more feedback. Got that? Okay? So people read best on paper. We all know that. Mail, you touch. And it piles up. If you don't touch it and throw it away, you will have a big mess. So you have to engage with it. We always know that you engage, okay? In the 80s, only 50% of households did remote buying. Now it's nearly 100%. This is the golden age of mail. And if you think mail is expensive, try using Google, okay? At $5, and this was from Adweek, a study of florists said $5 per click, 50% bounce rate, that means 10, okay? Or if it's a landing page, 80% bounce rate, which means it's 25 bucks just for the guy that clicks one link. After that, it's one or 2% response. Same as you've heard mail, okay? So you're talking about between $1.18 and $1.50 to get it into somebody's real hands that's gonna look at it versus $25 with Google. It's insane. Mail is cheap. Mail is the best deal in the 80s, we would tell people a dollar, you know, I remember telling IBM, they said, how much to mail all the businesses in America? I said, well, it's about a dollar per piece for a nice cat little catalog and uh, you can do it for less. You can still do it for less. Okay, 
We have five steps in machine learning. Mail has a built-in label data set. We know who got mailed. We know who bought. Therefore, we know who didn't buy. But we know who saw it. In digital, that is lost. Lots and lots and lots and lots of digital will have some effect, but you can't tell which is going on what. You can measure the clicks. Try and measure the causal impact. Mail has the highest engagement and the best attribution and tracking. You mail to the house and you ship to the house. Case studies. Okay, these were holdout tests. We did six of them over six years. Mail always won. These were people we selectively did not mail. This is their revenue per piece, almost double with the ones just, just they missed one month. In the downstream, they were worth half as much sales per customer. Here's three months holdout. Again, almost double. You can do that with mail. Try holding out your digital like Parker & Gamble. Your sales might go up. Okay, we also did 11 head-to-head -head tests with six modeling companies across the world. And each one was 500,000 or more pieces with a 64 or more page catalog. We won by an average of 60% on uniques tests. And our best one was 321%. I, I took away all the detail. Bullock and Jones used to take me to dinner at fancy restaurants around the country because they told me that not only did our uniques pull over $15 a book, like massively better ROI, but also he said, Eric Goodwill said, you find 20% more mailable customers. You've grown my company tremendously. Yes, we did. And then they sold it to Saks Fifth Avenue and Saks grew it in just two years from 21 million down to seven. Okay, here's what we're doing. We're talking about the bathtub model. You spend money, you get new customers. Everybody thinks you should be spending money to get new customers. New customers are everything. Okay, so the new customers go in the bathtub and you know, we can draw a line and we can say, okay, this is how many new customers you have. And we can see what rate you get. What's the, what's the cost of acquisition? What's the, what's the revenue per piece? What's the revenue per customer? The trouble is some are leaving you. And in marketing, you don't know. In life insurance, you know, Martin Bear invented this model and lifetime value model. And he knew, because if you don't send your policy number in with the money, they cancel you. And they have an interest in canceling you because then they get to keep everything you spent. If you stay till you die, they have to pay. Okay, so some of them are leaving. Some of them are staying. We don't know which. Got it? Okay. But what we know most about is these. We can infer these to some extent. These are the most valuable asset you have in your company. Not only because they're more likely to buy than these, buy again, but we also know what they bought. We know what triggered them. We know their geodemographics, the kind of neighborhood they live in. We know all kinds of things about them. They're our secret resource that nobody is using. Okay, here's a case study, modeling retail. Small retailer, they've been growing by adding stores. They said, we don't wanna add any more stores, but we wanna grow. We started with them in 2014, okay? We had nice growth, but what we did was we used the machine learning to understand their customer. Okay, we revise, we did holdout testing. We find a nine times, 900% ROI on every catalog we mailed across the board, just like Musician's Friend. We, we showed them how they could do testing. They could test the proper offer. They could see what draw, drove traffic to their existing stores. Then another vendor came along and said, we could target all of their anybody who visits their website so they did tv with the benefits and the and the features that we discovered worked the best with split testing we got more consistent tv branding and drove people to the website all digital now right doesn't it sound like digital it's on mass media and digital and in 2017 sales went up 30 percent. they went right here from about and this is public information they went public from about 75 million to 100 million in one year. Look at that. Just look at that. That's unprecedented. Okay. That is how you leverage mail for not only ROI, but also research and then multiply it into digital. Do you understand that? That's the future. 
Mail is the number one foundation for digital and the number one foundation for machine learning. We did three. We, we've been offering this 90-day ROI, guaranteed. We did three different titles, a holiday, a winter, and a spring. Okay? All uniques tests, all six figures of pieces. We had an average of about six of about 160% improvement over the way the customers segmented their names, a very traditional way, but nothing wrong with it, but 160% improvement. And here's our, we had 50%, the first drop or the first title, we had a hundred and something percent on the second and the net ROI was 350% return on the cost of modeling. We've been doing this for 25 years. Cabela's on our very first try with a model said they, they we made them an extra 2.4 million. Baseball Express, we helped grow from 5 million to 50 million. 10 time growth in 10 years. Not bad. Musician's Friend, 11 tests, 321%. 15 times we've seen explosive growth. Get my book, Spinning Straw on a Gold. So there's, are there two paths to the future? No, there's a third. AI, machine learning with mail as the foundation for ROI and insights. I'm not going to tell you all those stories, but that's the way it works. How do we start? With clear goals. We want an ROI win. Nothing else matters. Nothing else works. Not clicks, not number of eyeballs, nothing. We have a simple label data set. We start simple with your customer file. We have a 90-day ROI. It takes us about two months to build the data set about another month to model, and we put it in the mail. If we don't win by 20% or more, you're done, we're done. You'll still learn a ton, off we go. You need to have about 100,000 active customers. You're better off using mail right now for maximum engagement. It takes a couple of months to get the full results, picture back, 20% uh, better than the current selection. And we set up a three-year contract, why? Because it takes two or three years to really start seeing the benefit of the insights of the testing that the machine learning generates. I'm John Miglosh. Like and share. Your friends will think you're smart. Bye-bye.